there's many possibilities in terms of like what you can live in and what you can turn into your home. And that's all I want to do is like spark that imagination. So before Amazon Prime delivered groceries to people, there was Peapod. So this was, it delivered groceries. A lot of people living out of their vehicles, this, huh? this is a popular street for RVs, but they're not supposed to park here based on that sign right there. Over seven feet high and 22 feet long, you can't park here, which essentially is, that's my vehicle. Uh -huh. But I can get away with stuff that these others can't though, because I don't look like an RV. I look like a delivery truck. And that's the beautiful thing about having this. Something that I didn't even realize would be a thing until I started parking in urban areas. And people think you're just delivering. People think I'm delivering. I'm <laughs> delivering happiness. <laughs> Gas mileage? Gas mileage is horrible. Probably like 11 miles to the gallon. Yeah. So you don't bother to Something terrible. travel much. I can, I don't mind, I don't have any rent. So I have the money. If I wanted to, I could, but I don't drive every day. Yeah, in here, I mean, it's the cockpit, right? I wanted to kind of leave this alone. So when people pass by, it still looks like a delivery truck. Behind this door is where the magic happens. We have the front lawn right here, which is <laughs> my favorite. Usually we take off our shoes. You have my kitchen here with the stovetop burner underneath this. I have my refrigerator that pulls out. It's a dual zone refrigerator. And I basically have two zones. They're both set to refrigerator right now, but I could actually make one a freezer and one a refrigerator. Natural light is my favorite, so I created this window. And at night, I just close it up. And during the day, to let my light in, I put it up and hang it up there, and I have my plants and my sage. Gotta have the plants but also this is locked down with industrial strength Velcro and it stays there while I drive. So you have like, these are just metal cups, but I put some magnets up here to allow the cups to be up there. That brings us to the sink, running water. What kind of pump do you have? It looks like water that comes fairly easily. So it's about a 3.5 gallon per minute pump that's installed right under here. This is the switch that will turn the pump on. Just a single throw switch, which connects the circuit. And I just got one of these five gallon jugs right here. I have it connected to the water pump and it goes into my sink. Here's the gray water tank. And this is a temporary setup for now. Did you have building experience before you did this one? Not really. Okay. Oh! I've always been an engineer, so I understand how things work and I understand how things are built. Because this van is low tech and I don't have the ability to have like just an electrical lock system, it's all a, a manual latch system. So, the, you know, the door opens with this latching mechanism. It's pretty hefty. I didn't have a way to kind of secure this if someone broke the window and they reached in here, how to stop them from opening that. And so what my solution was, was actually using the same magnet holds that you find in hospitals. So when the door shuts, like that hospital door locks and you cannot get into it unless you press a button or you have access. So what I did was mount this 600 pound force magnetic lock vertically, mounted it to the frame of the truck where the door is at. And then this is the catch plate with a modified frame that I made out of wood. And so when you lock that, the light turns red and there's 600 pounds of force. So you have the magnetic lock right here. It's non-active right now after 10 seconds. It's ready to be active again. And so I can shut this door. It turns red. And now if I try to open it, it's not, it's not gonna open at all, unless you're Superman. I have this remote that deactivates it to get out or to get in. So now it's deactive. So that's my low tech solution to keeping this door secure. So even if someone broke a window, they wouldn't be able to open the door. They'd have to climb in the window. And if they got in here to steal something, they'd have to climb back out. So if they took something and they got out, they deserved it. <laughs> the bathroom is actually in here. The shower curtain back. I have a dry flush toilet. Shower, skylight. This is one of my favorites. I needed natural light in here. I have a couple hours to spare and I got some aluminum channeling, some L brackets. This is a piece of Lexan. I'm going to try and make a window frame so I can put it up in the roof. There was more light coming in this skylight right here, but my plant has grown so much. But I, I basically created my own skylight with a piece of Lexan, which is a little stronger than plexiglass. 
This was one of the first skylights I put in because I wanted this place to be like my sanctuary. It's just a really special place for me. And the fact that I now have a plant thriving in this vehicle, in this delivery truck. So yes, that's the living room. We have bench seating on both sides. I've had comfortably about eight people in here at once. So this table kind of like moves around. It's very handy. I have storage on both sides. There's my furnace underneath here. Propane powered furnace heats this place up nice and hot. And then on the other side, I have storage. And this one actually goes all the way back past this wall. This mural I painted, it's the best zoom background I've ever had. But it's also dual functionality. This is actually my bed. This is my Murphy bed that folds out from the wall. Center the table, pull it down. And there's my bed. <laughs> How much time did that take you? Yeah. I've timed it, it's like 13 seconds or something like that. It's the fastest bed setup of any van, unless they have their bed like already a platform. Uh -huh. But if you have to make up your bed in your van, this is the fastest setup. No one else has a faster setup than I do. And go. Stop. Did you build that? I did. These will control the swivel of the bed. And I got these because it's low profile. These are considerably less instead of the standard Murphy bed hardware. I have both hinges done. And so it'll fold out from the wall like this. When I built this at the time, I hadn't seen any vans with Murphy beds. There are people doing them now, which I love. So you're using the benches as the platform? The benches are the platform. The bed is also, it has it's a slats. structure. Yeah, it has slats in here. And this is a full-size, it is thick mattress. Full-size bed. It's super strong. Like, I can jump on it. You know, it's not going anywhere. It's supported in terms of me lifting it up and putting it back. It's supported by two gas struts that give kind of like a 40-pound help on each side. I'll lift this up. But you see, I can like put it away with like one hand. Oh, wow. It stays up. Oh, it stays up. Too. Yeah, so the, the gas struts, yes. The gas struts keep it up when I'm driving. So like you can, you can pull it and it'll go right back to where it. The, the bed was easily one of the most challenging parts because I needed to accommodate for space in the back without taking space from the living room area. I also needed to accommodate for the width of the bed coming down, right? And so when it does come down, you can actually lay another person right here. Uh, which I love, but full-size bed. I wanted the depth. I wanted the space. It's also silent, right? I, I didn't hear. It's a, yeah, yeah, it's, you know, it's not, but you see, I can, I can, I can hold it up with one hand. It's not, it's not terribly uh, heavy at all. Either you are super strong. <laughs> <laughs> the gas, it's the gas stress, but like, you know, I can, yeah, but, yeah. but that's because of the help. If I didn't have the help from the gas struts, which I absolutely put the, I had to put this in before I installed these, and it was heavy. I have to get on. Okay, it's fine. Lift with your legs. It took me and my mom to do that. Sorry. Sorry. So how did you like sort that out with the gas struts? There was a lot of engineering. <laughs> these are the same gas struts that help your trunk lift up in your car. They're the gas struts that help the back doors lift up in an SUV, but I didn't know what size. What I'm doing is I'm actually using a vice grip <laughs> to compress the struts. Yes, just like that. There's also no instructions on how to mount gas struts, right? Like what position they're supposed to be in to maximize the power. And that's something that I actually wanna work on. It comes down right here. Yeah, this was like prototype one. That's so cool. And what did this look like before? This was an empty truck, metal. Yeah, I, I got this from Indiana and it was just empty. It was an empty shell. Affordable? It was 9,500. And I, and I spent around 8,000 on the build. Okay. With everything. For a full Pr home? Pretty much. Moves. I got this truck with 260,000 miles on it. Mm -hmm. And it's almost at 300 now. I took apart the instrument panel. There are two missing LEDs, and one of them is for my engine light. Let's turn the key. Boom. <laughs> That's what should be there. Beautiful. I had to change the radiator, which is expected after 270,000 miles. 
I changed the alternator myself, yeah. spark plugs. I hope this is it. I changed the starter myself. Get lights. O2 sensors, various things, but nothing crazy. Let's try it. Oh boy. It actually looks like my roof can withstand some weight. Don't push on that. I need to create extensions for the MC4 cables. The MC4 cables are actually the ones that connect to the solar panels and come down through the roof right there. How long did it take you to build? To build it out? Like Overall, if you condensed all the, like every day I worked on it, probably be around seven months. It has power. And this is not a home, this is a, a, a truck and a van. So this is my electrical closet. So some of these things I had to kind of figure it out because there was no documentation for it. There's nothing, no blueprint for me to follow. In here, I just have the charge controller and this basically determines uh, how much charge the battery gets. This is the inverter, which converts the 12 volts coming from the solar panels and the battery and it converts it to 120 volts for our standard electrical appliances. Over here, I have my 12 volt terminal buses and these power most of the things in this truck. So the water pumps, the camera monitors, the cameras, my lights, my USB ports, it powers pretty much everything. There are two lithium batteries. These are very light, 30 pounds each. I have my breakers in here just in case there's an overload. I have my induction stove. The only problem is that it uses a lot of power. So that's why I'm doing this like while the sun is out, batteries are at 100%. I understand how things are built, but in terms of like me actually building something like this and building a base cabinet or building uh, benches or a shower even, like just the shower and the plumbing stuff, I've never done that before, but I figured it out. This is my closet. It's accessible all the way down to here so I can open up these doors and access different parts. And then up here, I have like my hanging clothes and this is literally all the clothes that I have. I don't have much. I keep it simple. <laughs> yeah, and then just like different materials, like the corrugated metal was something that was like originally in my brain when I had this vision of this truck. This is still my one of my favorite things when I walk in the truck is like this, this material and this use just makes it feel like so industrial. And then I have my pipe lights that I built. I love these, so these kind of go along with this, but everything just really works for me. It's absolutely a personification of my personality. I have a little seat back that I built. That's natural resting, but if you, you know, need to sit back, you can just kind of put that up and just sit back. This is nice and comfortable. <laughs> and you used what for the box? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so these are locking shelf brackets. They can collapse, they can come up, but they can hold a lot of weight and they're solid steel. They just have these little clips underneath that you clip down and they put, they go away. So I took that and I said, how can I use these to then install like a seat back? And so I actually drilled holes through each bracket. I got an aluminum tubing, some L brackets, and I got a threaded rod and I drilled it all the way through. And then I mounted the L brackets to this piece of wood. <laughs> now I have a seat back. So I was pretty proud of this when I made it because it was something that I fabricated to work exactly as I envisioned it. But it also holds these pillows in place. <laughs> There's a screen right here. And when I'm done, you know, just put it away. So now we have my music closet. So I have a bunch of guitars, keyboards, uh, but I've been playing music for 16 years. I love it. And then the garage. So I have my bike back here, trash. I have some supplies and tools and stuff, but for the most part, this is the garage, just like anybody else's garage, <laughs> where things go <laughs> that you don't have a place for. How do you get that bike out of there? You just lift. You go get to the back, open the doors, pull it out. Easy. Unoma House is my company. Unoma is from a language called Igbo, which is derived from Nigeria. It means beautiful home. So Unoma means beautiful home, and then house is the German spelling. I have German roots. I also have Nigerian roots. 
And it was kind of an, an ode and a nod to both of those genealogies. And just kind of like changing the landscape and changing the narrative of what it means in terms of like what a home is. But also the people living in things like this. Yeah, I want to be that safe haven, that example, that trustworthy figure in my community for people to do this. I had some snacks in here though. You have good healthy food. I'm vegan. It does help keep food in here, but also I love junk vegan food. <laughs> there are vegan donuts that I love. I love fries, like. 